All right, you probably know what we're talking about. You see it right here. You saw the thumbnail, you read the title. So we're gonna be talking about 22 LRs in different situations, and we're gonna go over this particular 22 specifically. Okay, so just a quick breakdown of how I've got this one set up. So this is the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. I've had it for five years now. I put, I don't know, probably 15, 20,000 rounds through it. Um, you know, 22 is cheap to shoot. So on the back of it, I've got the Magpul. Um, this is just, I think, the MOE stock. You know, this is just kind of like their base model stock. Uh, coming forward to that, got the Reptilia. Um, I forget the name of the grip, but I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, I've got Magpul backup sights. These are just the polymer ones. Coming forward to that, the optic that I've got sitting on it is the lead and steel LP1, the Promethean. Uh, lead and steel did send this out to me a uh, while back. This is one of the very first models that they uh, you know, produced. Got no real relationship with them. They didn't pay me or anything, didn't offer to pay me. Uh, they send it out for pictures. So don't don't get your panties in a wad. Uh, the optic's been great. It is sitting on a um, Unity riser clone. It's not a legitimate one. I uh, didn't want to spend the money for a 22. So this is just a clone that I got off of, offline. Um, forward of that, we've got a Wise Men Company. This is the Hot Pocket. Very um, weird platform to put a heat shield on, but I like it. This is actually my preferred way to hold pressure pads because it's got the bungee going across it. Um, so I do have the pressure pad that is running to the Streamlight. Uh, this is the ProTech. Uh, this, I think is the Gen 1. I think they're on the Gen 2 now. This is the smaller one. I think the Gen 2 is the really big chunky one. Forward of that, I have a barrel shroud. And that is wrapped in a Coltac uh, corset suppressor cover. Again, really weird use for a heat shield uh, because it's a 22 and you know it don't get that hot. But it's for aesthetic reasons. Also on the side, I've got a um, sling. This has been shown on the channel before. This is from uh, I forget the name. Eastern Shore Sling Co. in Rhodesian Brushstroke. Really, really cool sling. I'm really starting to like it. So now we're just going to kind of talk about 22s. When you would use one, um, you know, just, just kind of have a little quick discussion about it. Now, a lot of people like 22 rifles for the fit hits, the shan situations. And I think a 22 is a great option because you can carry a lot of rounds and doesn't weigh hardly anything. Um, you can take down most anything with a 22, but that is where people have this weird, I don't, I don't even know, you know, everybody likes to say, oh, well, it's, it's just a 22, and then the other type, or the other side of people, they like to say, well, you know, how about you stand in front of it, let me shoot you with it. Well, I tend to jump on with the side that people are like, it's just a 22. Now, I'm not standing in front of it. I mean, I'm not going to let you shoot me with a slingshot. I'm not talking about how bad a 22 would hurt to get hit by or whether or not it, it's lethal because it's absolutely lethal. I mean, I can, if I throw a piece of rebar at you, you know, it's, and it goes through you in the right spot, it's lethal. I can shoot you with a nail gun. It's lethal. It, it's not the best option though because we got to start talking about stopping power. So that's why I don't recommend carrying 22 LR for self defense. Sure, it'll put holes in people and it'll kill them. But is it going to stop them from doing what they're doing right now? No, it's not. Not unless you get like a perfect hit. You know, I can dump 20 rounds of somebody, but if they're jacked up on meth or whatever, I'm not all that into drugs. Um, you know, we'll say bath salts. I think that's the one where they, they don't like to go down. Somebody's jacked up on bath salts. I can put 20 rounds of 22 into them. It's not going to stop them. So you got to look, well, do I want 20 rounds of 22 or would I rather put... 10 rounds of nine millimeter into them. Well, I'm gonna choose nine millimeters got more stopping power to actually put them down. That's why like shotguns for self-defense are so, so dangerous for the, the attacker because a shotgun, a 12 gauge shotgun's got so much stopping power. There's so much energy getting dumped onto the target at one time that even though other things will kill them and they'll be just as dead, it's not going to stop them immediately like, you know, these other other calibers and other platforms will. So that's my argument with 22. I'm not going to choose 22 
as like a fighting gun because it doesn't have the stopping power that I want to actually put somebody down immediately. You might mention hunting. Well, absolutely. That's, I mean, it, it would play an awesome role as far as hunting in a, in a, that type of survival situation, but that's not the one I'm going to choose just because it's semi-automatic. And of course you've got the Ruger 1022, great platform, but again, it's semi-automatic and it's, I'm, I please understand I am not discrediting the 1022. It is phenomenal. It is as proven as any other gun out there. I just don't have a 1022 that I put that many rounds through. My sister's got a 1022. We put a lot of rounds through it, but you know, I just don't have as much confidence in another gun or another 22 as I do this one right here. This is my very first gun. I got it when I was four, so I've had it for 18 years. Not even exaggerating. I've probably put, I would say it's right there at 100,000 rounds through. It used to run through like 7,000 rounds every weekend back when 22 was, you know, pennies. So this is the Henry H001. It's a youth model, so it's really compact. And because like I said, I was four when I got it, but still it being compact just makes it a little bit more handier. Um, great rifle, killed lots of squirrels with it. So in like one of those situations, this is going to be what I choose because I've got more trust in this than I do a semi-automatic or any other 22 that I've ever shot or any other 22 that I have. This is going to be the one I pick because I can shoot tons of different types of ammo and one thing to know as far as like a manual action 22 is 22 is notorious for malfunctioning but if you've got a semi-automatic it's a little bit harder to clear the malfunction you know if you get a light primer strike well now you've got a you know you've got to rack the charging handle or rack the bolt uh, if you get a malfunction you know you've got to drop mags and all that stuff here you know if, if I pull the trigger and I'm going to dry fire it just just twice or once I don't know once or twice so I know you're not supposed to dry fire 22s just FYI but for the sake of the video I'm going to so say it's clear all right so say you know I'm up on target and I pull the trigger and he goes click it's a light primer strike instead of having to reach up and you know charge anything I can just throw it out and pull the trigger again so that's why I'm going to choose this one like I said, it's, I'm gonna choose a manual 22 and it's gonna be this one. So, is this gun better than no gun? Absolutely, especially in that situation. Well, in any situation, you know, this is gonna be better than no gun. And it'll absolutely get the job done. You can, you can be very lethal with a 22. It just doesn't offer the stopping power that I would look for if I'm choosing a firearm for those types of situations. Um, small game hunting, sure, it's, it's great. Still, I'm gonna choose the, the Henry that I've got that I just now shown, just cause I trust it more. It's lighter, more simple. Um, I can shoot like the 22 mini mag or like the, uh, the little 22 shorts. Uh, so I've got a bigger variety of ammo. It tends to be, it's been much more reliable than this one. Now your experiences may differ, but like I said, that's gonna be the one I'm gonna choose. I'm not gonna choose this, even though it looks cooler I just don't trust it as much. It hasn't been as reliable as the Henry has. But nowadays I do shoot this one more because of the familiarity, familiar error, familiar error. I shoot it more because it is very similar to a legitimate AR, which I shoot regularly. So the it's still the same manual of arms so that when I'm shooting this, I'm training the exact same habits and exact same muscle memory as when I jump up to one of the legitimate ARs. So, now we're gonna jump into that side of things for training. This is where this right here shines because like I said, it's got the, sa it's the same, uh, same controls, same manual of arms as an AR-15. So you can run this, you could train with this all the time and then you know, occasionally take your 5.56 or 300 blackout or whatever you're shooting, jump in and take that gun out, and everything's gonna feel really natural to you, but you're gonna be able to train for a lot cheaper. Now, one of the huge benefits to 22LR is it's inexpensive. Now, you can absolutely dry fire. That's a fantastic form of training, and you should be dry firing. But let's be honest, dry firing can get a little bit boring for most people, myself included. It's more expensive than dry fire, and it's more expensive than uh, like the laser systems, but it's cheaper than 5.56 or any other you know full size or moderate caliber that you'd be shooting. So 
it's kind of that good middle ground. Like I said, more fun than dry fire, but it's more expensive than dry fire, but it's cheaper than 5.56. Sometimes you just need to get out and you need to, you just need to shoot. Even if you dry fire all the time, sometimes you just need to pull an actual trigger with a live round. So since it's the same manual of arms and it's 22 LR, which we've already discussed, it has a tendency to be unreliable. Well, that's actually a good thing when it comes to training because then you get to work malfunctions. And it's not these fake simulated malfunctions, you know, where you might put two rounds in, in the magazine, you know, you pull the trigger twice and you know that, okay, when I pull this trigger twice, then the bolt's gonna lock to the rear, you know, I gotta do a reload. It's not staged, it's a legitimate malfunction. And you get to train that, you get to train clear in that because it's the exact same manual of arms as your standard AR. So this gun is going to malfunction and then you get to train actually clearing that malfunction, whether it's a, a failure to feed, failure to eject, it's double feed, um, you know, what have you. You get to work clearing malfunctions because it's a 22 and it's gonna malfunction. So whether you're running uh, drills with it, uh, you wanna just work on, maybe, you, maybe you've got a new drill or a new technique, come, maybe coming around, you know, certain barricades or got a new piece of equipment that you want to kind of test out and see if you like it well that you know it's a good option um it, the magazines fit in all the same magazine holders so like here in chest rig maybe you've got a new chest rig or you're working reloads from a belt well the magazine that takes fits in all the same pouches so all that i mean it, it's all the exact same no matter what you're running with your ar this right here will do the exact same thing, but do it a lot cheaper. So since all the controls are the same, uh, not only does that benefit you training, but it benefits you shooting with other people. Uh, this is one of my favorite guns to hand to new shooters because it looks cool, is it looks really exciting, but they're not scared to shoot it because it's just a 22. But they can, I can take and teach them on this, then hand them the legitimate thing, and they know how to operate it. Now, as I said. I grew up shooting 22s. I got my first 22 when I was four. Um, I'm sure most of you grew up shooting 22s. And if you want to get your kids started early on using an AR platform, well, this is also a great option. Now you take this, you throw it in a tripod like this right here. That way they don't even have to worry about holding it up. Now you talk about fun and a good experience for a first time shooter like a kid. This, this takes all the work out of it, makes it pure fun. You, know, you get a little five or six year old, you've got this locked in to the tripod so you don't really have to worry about them, you know, moving it around and dropping it or flagging you or flagging somebody else. You can get it locked into a safe direction and then you can teach them, you know, to keep their finger off the trigger until they're ready to fire. Um, teach them, you know, proper sight picture, trigger control, manipulating the safety, you know, all of that. So this makes a fantastic option if you do have a kid or even just a new shooter in general, you know, this is a fantastic platform to teach them, to get them started in the thing that we all love and hold so valuable. It's just some buzzards and they're eating a dead possum that down there in the creek. Um, so like I said, maybe cost isn't that big of a deal to you, but maybe you live, you know, outside of city limits, so you're you can shoot without any sort of rules or anything like that, but you still got relatively close neighbors and you don't want to be really obnoxious. Well, this is a lot quieter than 556. Um, the bullets don't travel quite as far. You know, you can shoot in a relatively close environment and you don't have to worry about, you know, bullets going through your backstop or if if you do pull a shot you know you ain't got to worry about that bullet going quite as far it doesn't take much to stop a 22. Uh, you can also work shooting longer distances now i would probably go with something other than this but we're just talking about 22 lr as a, as a caliber right now as far as training goes so maybe you've got like you want to do a 22 bolt gun uh and you want to simulate you know shooting at those longer distances four five six hundred yards well 200 yards that's a long shot for 22 lr so there's there's tons of uh, tons of ways you can implement 22 into your training uh, and into your arsenal. 
ultimately it just comes down to 22s are fun and that's that's why i have this gun is because it's fun uh especially when you throw a suppressor on it like bam now don't do this um this actually voids the warranty of this particular can i if i remember reading the website correctly this is the otter creek labs polonium k and i've got it mounted up using a reardon uh, system throw a suppressor on the 22 and now 22 performs like nothing else because you can actually get it movie quiet so maybe you want to shoot at night uh maybe you live in a neighborhood maybe you want to just be really really quiet and have fun well that's where 22 shines especially when you throw a suppressor on it you throw a suppressor on it shoot subsonic ammo and you're literally movie quiet so like i said i like to use this shooting at night because i don't want to be obnoxious to the neighbors they're not that close but you know if i'm out here shooting well past dark it might raise some questions now plenty of people around here shoot at dark but like i said i just don't want to be that obnoxious to the neighbors because i like my neighbors they're good people most of them at least i think <laughs> but i can throw the suppressor on uh even shooting supersonic ammo you know still really really quiet and they can't hear it through the trees subsonic ammo well now it's just hilariously quiet uh shooting pests or anything like that Say you're shooting like squirrels or something like that. You've got a bunch of them around you. Throw the suppressor on, some subsonic ammo, go to work, and you're not really spooking the rest of them. So, I am tired of talking about this gun. We're going to shoot it some. Uh, suppressed, unsuppressed, and I'll wait until it gets dark, and then I'll do some nighttime stuff as well. All right. Got the suppressor on. Going to throw in some supersonic. So, even with supersonic, it's still really quiet. Um, after this, we'll throw in some subsonic. As you can hear, still really quiet, even shooting sub supersonic ammo. Um, 22, you don't have to worry about the suppressor heating up, which this is a steel 5.56 can. I just voided the warranty uh, from my understanding, but you can do it. All right, so now I've got, what, four rounds of subsonic loaded up. I thought I brought more, but this is all I got. Uh, the, the steel target that you're hearing is a full-size silhouette at 50 yards, uh, just so you can maybe judge by the sound. I promise you it is, um, it is exceptionally quiet shooting subsonic ammo so we got one chambered no. all right here we go so you can hear just how quiet you can get a 22 shooting subsonic ammo running suppressed i mean it is it is phenomenal it's super fun especially if you've never heard it, it makes everybody laugh the first time they do hear it All right, guys, I just realized I made a huge mistake. Um, I haven't put these on the entire time I was shooting. Uh, I'm not even gonna try to make excuses for it. Like I said, I'm, I'm shooting steel. It's at 50 yards, shooting 22. Um, that is no excuse. Always, always, always put on your eye protection. I got down here, got the video stuff set up, was thinking about the video and I completely forgot to put on my eye probe. They've been sitting on my head the entire time. Do not make the, the same mistake I do. Always, always, always protect your eyes. So, 22 for self-defense. Not gonna recommend it. Get something with more stopping power. Is, is it still a bullet? Absolutely, it's still a bullet. Will it kill something? Absolutely, it'll kill something. Again, think about stopping power, not lethality. Now, as far as hunting goes great option especially for small game i wouldn't shoot big game with it uh it, again it can absolutely do it proper shot placement is still a bullet not as reliable at doing its job as other 
cartridges, much bigger cartridges. Again, stopping power. 22 is not as reliable as a bunch of the other calibers out there, but if you implement that in the right way, as far as training goes, it's a great training tool because it tends to be less reliable. You know, you can get some pretty finicky ammo, get cheap ammo, and you can be training malfunctions all day long. It's cheap to shoot. If it's something similar to this, uh, like an AR-22, well, all the manual of arms and everything is exactly the same and it's gonna translate over to your legitimate AR. All right, so we've kind of come to the end of this video. I do believe, uh, you know, I, I'm sure there, there can be more in, in the future on this subject. Ask any questions y'all wanna ask in the comments. I'll answer every single comment that gets commented on this video. At least I will do my very best. I've So far I haven't missed a comment on any of the videos. So be sure to comment any questions, thoughts, concerns, uh, something that I got wrong, something that I got right, you just wanna add something, be sure to drop that in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. it helps the video, helps the algorithms, helps me grow this channel. If you're not doing so already and you're not aware, I am a gun gear photographer slash amateur videographer. I'm just gotten a video, so I'm starting off for that as well. A lot of cool companies out there uh, that I do work with. So be sure to hop over to Instagram. I'll have it linked in the description. It is the same handle as this right here. It's operator overalls. Like I said, the easiest way is just gonna be hit the link that I've got listed in the description of this video. Take you over there, check it out. If you like cool pictures, you wanna miss, you don't wanna miss any of the action going on. Be sure to follow me over there. DM me, we'll strike up a conversation. Maybe we can meet up one day, do a range day. I don't really know, but like I said, trying to grow it. So jump over there, be a part of everything going on and I would greatly appreciate it.